In this video, I'm going to take a look at the programmable peripheral interface. In this architectural diagram for the basic 286 system configuration that I'm working on, uh, there isn't necessarily a direct callout for this uh, chip that we're going to be taking a look at. The chip is an 8255 programmable peripheral interface, or PPI for short. I'm just setting it off here to the right. You know, you do see to the left of that, there's an optional decode that can be put into this. And then it says, and IO chip selects, which obviously means we've got some IO chips, chips that can do just general input and output. And that's really what this PPI is gonna do for me in my build. As far as where I'm gonna place this on my breadboards, uh, this is gonna sit in the upper right and you do see that I've marked two of these on my oh, just general layout. So I'll talk about why maybe I've got two. I don't know if two is necessary. Uh, I'm sure none of this is actually necessary, but uh, I am going to use two of these uh, PPIs and I'll show you what I'm going to use those for as I get going. The chip that I specifically am using is an NEC D8255AC-2 and that is described as a programmable peripheral interface. And on the screen, you can see the pinout and a quick uh, listing of the, the descriptions for those pins or what the functions of those pins are. And most of this seems pretty straightforward. I don't see anything here that uh, doesn't seem relatively straightforward as far as the initial connectivity. Uh, but let me walk through this, and, and if uh, I have any of this uh, not quite right, as usual, let me know. But We've got, a, we've got a reset signal. We've been using that on many of the different ICs that I've been connecting. We're going to connect this PPI to the data bus. We're going to have a read and a write signal. There's also a chip select, so I need to pull the chip select low when I want this PPI to actually be enabled. I'm going to use uh, address A1 and A0 to help me define what port so there's multiple ports that I can work with, three different ports actually on these PPIs. So I can work with those ports independently and I can address them through uh, how I set A1 and A0. And then we've got the ports. You can see ports A, B, and C, and they just show that you've got eight pins for each of those three ports. And those are parts I might write out values, those are ports that might read in values, or maybe I have something that is more of this input-output type of port. And then we've got VCC and ground. So pretty, pretty straightforward there. Here is the first PPI that I am going to configure. And if you take a look at this, uh, we've previously used this IORC coming from the bus controller. Uh, so that's going to help me control this read. We have an IOWC that will go to the right signal. Uh, reset is going to go to the same reset signal as everything else. The chip select is going to go to basically a signal that I'm generating out of my PSOC and then I'm latching it. And on one of the previous chips that I went through, uh, I saw in the schematic that they recommended latching the, the basically the cable select or the output enable signal. So I'm now doing that on this uh, PPI also. So my PSOC is gonna have logic in it that says at what address should I actually turn on PPI one. I'm sending that out of the PSOC, I'm latching it, and then that latched version of that signal is what I'm bringing in here uh, as this PPI1 CS latched, basically. And then I've got bus A1 and bus A0. So those are address lines that have been latched. And then I also have my data lines. So eight data lines that have also been uh, basically connected through a transceiver. And that's why I've got bus in front of the A1, A0, and the D0 through D7 is because I'm going through transceiver or latch, uh, whichever, uh, based on data or address here. And then I can see I've got my first port, the port A here, the pins that go with that. I've got my port B over here. And then I've got my port C. So that would be my three ports that I can work with. 
In this first scenario, I'm going to connect up a 1602 LCD. So it's a two line, 16 character display, a pretty simple standard display. My first build of a 286 processor, kind of at the end of that part of the video series, I connected an LCD like this and was, was driving it and that was working well. That was without a PPI though. I was going straight from the processor to uh, basically to the LCD. I guess I was going through uh, uh, some latches, but that's about it. Latches and uh, one transceiver. Uh, here though, I'm gonna use the PPI. So this will sit between the LCD and everything else. And really, I'm gonna use port A. And you can just see I've got all the pins running over to these data pins. So port A, pin zero, or port A0 to DB0, port A1 to DB1, etc. And then I've got three signals to help control the LCD, and I'm just gonna connect those up to another port. So I'm gonna use port B, pin 0, 1, and 2, to control the signals of RS, RW, and E. And then really the rest of these are just uh, either power for the backlight or power for uh, the basically the IC that's driving the LCD or an adjustment for the brightness of the backlight. So that's the first PPI that I'm going to have in the system. I am going to also work on a second one and really it's the exact same thing over here as far as the basic connectivity except for I've got a PPI2 CS latched and then I'm going to connect over to basically a small circuit that's going to let me connect a PS2 keyboard. And the way that the circuit works is I'm going to be able to generate an interrupt when I hit a key and that's going to get sent over to my interrupt controller. Uh, so previously I've talked about the inter interrupt controller. This is going to connect into that. I still have a lot of assembly to figure out to make that work, but uh, this should be the right connection, I believe. And then I'll be able to also read out values from these 595s. This circuit essentially goes back to Ben Eater's 6502 video series where he connects up a PS2 keyboard using this exact circuit. So uh, I've used this circuit in my 6502 builds and my 65816 builds. Uh, and it's always uh, been a, a good little circuit for PS2 keyboard input. So that's my second PPI and uh, basically again I'm just uh, going to raise an interrupt when I press a key. So this will send this over to the interrupt controller and then I'm going to be able to read you know, what key data was corresponding to the key that was pressed and then I'll have to do something in assembly with that key data. Figure out what ASCII character and then print the ASCII character to the LCD as an example. So I figure between these two PPIs, I'll be able to input from PS2 keyboard, I'll be able to output to an LCD. That'll be a pretty big milestone for me. I'll be able to, to show that uh, the basic system is working, input and output. And I'll be able to, to uh, build up some assembly uh, coding skill for the x86 stuff. As far as the control signals uh, for PPI1 and PPI2, Here's an updated picture of the PSOC. So I've added those output signals for chip select. I've also added some uh, corresponding LED indicator outputs because uh, so, these again are active flows. And then I have an inverted or a high to be able to turn on some LEDs to show me that I am using PPI1 or PPI2. I've not added any additional inputs as far as address lines or anything like that. And this is what my current logic looks like. Uh, so what you can see down here to the right is where I left off in the last video with the coprocessor, I was using the space of F8. Uh, now you can see with PPI1, I am using E0 and with PPI2, I'm using E8. And I did also come up to my I.O. controller up here and I did add in some of the higher address lines just to be safe uh, to make sure I'm not stepping on any, any I.O. here. This is giving me my addresses so I can now write to and control uh, basically the PPI. 
setting how it's going to behave, what mode it's going to work in, writing out to its, having it write out of its pins or read in from its pins uh, for the ports, the three different ports. And so I've got this first one and I'll be able to use three ports on it and three ports on the other. And as you saw earlier, between the LCD, that's going to use two ports. And then the, the PS2 keyboard is only using one port. And let me back up just to take a look at that again. So if I go to the 1602 LCD, uh, one port up here is being used for data to the LCD. And another port, three bits of it, are being used for controlling the LCD. And then when I take a look at the keyboard, I'm just simply using port B and the other ports I am not using. Um, so I'm sure you could say that technically I could just use a single PPI and get all of this done. I want to have a little room for other things as I move forward. And I did also want to just kind of experiment with having multiple PPIs and the address decode and working with them accordingly. If you have any questions on any of this, please ask. If you have suggestions on improvements to this, uh, as always, just please let me know. Thanks. Thank you.